welcome to Steph Udall. I am unsurprisingly Steph. Am I gonna say that in every video? <laughs> and I've got another collab doll for you. This time the theme was Sanrio. It was hosted by both Imagination Dream Studios and Harley's Dollhouse on Instagram. I love Sanrio, so I joined immediately, even though I wasn't sure which character I was going to make. I didn't want to go with the little twin stars since I had only recently made a twelve from Animal Crossing. My next idea was to make Cinema Roll into sort of a cross between a barista and a guy from a butler cafe, which would be really cute and cool, uh, but I just wasn't that inspired this time, though maybe I might make him later because I still like the idea. My next idea was Big Challenges. Big Challenges debuted in 1978 and uh, is an alligator and pretty rad. Uh, however, I just couldn't quite figure out how to interpret him into a doll, so that was out, unfortunately. Though I am still waiting for official Big Challenges merch, Sanrio. I finally settled on Wish Me Mel, and I knew immediately how I'd translate her into a doll. I first learned about Wish Me Mel while watching Princess Peachy's Princess in Japan vlog series, particularly when she went to Sanrio Puro Land, which was uh, episode 4 and 5, I believe. Highly recommend that series, by the way. Mel used to be a hikikomori, or a shut-in, and wouldn't leave her house, before her friends wrote her letters to encourage her, and then she finally came out. There's a bit more to it than that, but that's basically the gist. And I very much relate to her as someone who struggles with agoraphobic tendencies, especially lately. <laughs> What's up? I also took some inspiration from Dollmotion's video for making Jolene the pen, uh, namely the posable ears. I'll be using this already prepped Katrine to Mew for my base, but those cat ears will need to go to make room for her bunny ears. Thankfully, which was what I was hoping, the ears on this doll aren't hollow, so I don't have to worry about filling in any holes in her head. Speaking of ears, I first make an armature out of wire and bandage tape to give the clay something to stick to. I used a template I made to make sure that both ears are the same size. Then I push the armatures into the head and add silk clay on top. Silk clay is flexible when it's dry, so she'll have posable ears. I let them dry for about 24 hours. Then I traced around the ears with a yellow paint pen. I thought a marker would be a little too dark since she's going to have light pastel colored hair. Then I removed the ears and painted them. I'll be adding cloth later. Then I painted the head in preparation of the rear. Since Mel's tricolor pastel tail is canonically dyed, I decided to use the same colors for her hair. A soft yellow, a lilac, and a minty sage green. Then I added a couple of coats of Mod Podge to protect the paint from flaking off while I reroute. This time, I'll be using yarn. I had the right colors on hand already, and I could use it for both Mel's hair and her tail, so bonus. To prepare the yarn, I wrap it around some cardboard before I cut it to make sure I ended up with strands all the same length. Then I unravel the yarn into its individual strands. The yellow and lilac yarn are four ply, so they have four strands, and the mint has three. Unraveling makes it easier for me to reroute, and helps me not to make her hair too full. I'll be back when I'm done unraveling the rest. This will take a little while. Rerouting with yarn is even easier than rerouting with nylon. It does require some extra steps afterward, but we'll get there. Thread a strand of yarn through the needle, stab the needle into the head and out through the neck hole, and pull it through. Tie a knot in the end of the yarn, and then pull it taut from the other side. Done. Super simple. You can add glue once you're done, but you don't necessarily need it. I'll go ahead and finish rerouting, following the paint as a guide for the colors. Now, since I used yarn, there are a couple more steps involved since I want her to have straight hair. So let's start with the bangs. Or fringe. Whichever you prefer. I brush out the yarn carefully with a pet brush. I save the fluff to use later for other projects. Then I 
Then I use a hair straightener and I'm left with nice, shiny, soft hair. Now I just have to do the rest. I left the part for last. It's made up of two parallel rows. Before I brush it out, I crisscross the two rows of yarn strands. This helps make the part look more full without risking ripping into the head. I actually do the same thing when I reroute with nylon hair. Then I brush out the part and straighten it just like the rest. While I'm at it, I brush out some additional yarn for her tail and her ears. I glue the yarn for her tail onto a plastic bag and set it aside to dry. About a day later, I made an armature for her tail in the same way I did for her ears, with wire and bandage tape. The glue is all set, and I can cut the wefts. Then I glue the wefts on, with the lilac on the bottom, yellow on the top, and wrapping the mint around the sides. Once the glue is dry, I give the tail a trim, and it's done! I cut the brushed out pink and white yarn up into teeny teeny tiny pieces to create flock for the ears. To apply the flock, I first paint a thin layer of glue on the area I want to cover. Then I press the flock onto the glue. After about a day, glue is dry, and I use the toothbrush to brush off the excess flock. Then I repeat the process to cover the white areas of the ears. I actually ended up needing to do two layers of the white because I didn't quite get the coverage that I wanted. Then I add the white polka dots to her ears with acrylic paint, which I later sealed in with Mod Podge. One thing I really wanted to do with this doll was give her flat feet. First, I mark when I want to make my cuts. Then it's time to bust out the power tools. Be sure to use all of the proper safety equipment, a respirator, safety glasses, earplugs, and also make sure that you're an adult because this this part, very dangerous. Just be, be a grown up. This part is not for kids. I only recently got my Dremel tool, and I never used it before this, so I decided to use another doll to make some test cuts on. You'll probably see her again in a future video, I'm sure. Then I cut my base saw on the lines I drew, and drilled some holes to make room for some wire armature. In future, I'd probably drill the holes a little bit deeper, as they were a bit shallow for this application. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure, though, this time it will not cause any problems. It was really difficult trying to make sure that her legs stayed the same length. I think one of them is still like a millimeter longer than the other, but I'm okay with it. And you'll, you'll see why. <laughs> I glue the wire in place, let that dry, and then I use Milliput to fill in the rest. Milliput is a two-part epoxy clay, like epoxy sculpt but it's much easier to find where I live and vastly more affordable. I've been using the silver gray for a while now, but I decided to try the super fine white here. It was a lot stickier and harder to work with as a result. In hindsight, I probably should have let it sit for a bit after I mixed it before I started working with it. That might have helped. I quickly decided the gloves were not my friend and were only making it more difficult. Do as I say, not as I do, though. Please wear gloves when working with an epoxy clay. Luckily, I didn't get any skin irritation from it, but it's possible. Once the clay is cured, I start sanding. So much sanding. And, uh... Oh. That is flaking a bit. That's fine. I'll, I'll be able to sand that right out. And, oh dear. Oh no. No, 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 no. Okay, I can fix this. I'll add some super glue. I'll make another pass with the clay. More sanding. And we're finally in a place I'm happy with. It was a journey. Now for paint. I wanted to try this Liquitex acrylic ink as I thought it might act similarly to model paints as it's highly pigmented, it's very fluid, doesn't need to be watered down. If from everything I read in the description, it's, it sounded very much like a model paint, and I thought that would help keep me from showing brush strokes. Then I added her little heart paw pads, 
and it's time to seal it all in with some matte sealant. So, don't use Windsor Newton matte varnish. I remember I had trouble with it on a previous doll, but it's what I had on hand, so I thought I'd try it. Um, it was gloopy and awful, and it can't be thinned down with water. And I know it says on the bottle that it can be used on acrylic paintings. However, I still think it's more used for oil paintings, because... Oh, it's it's awful. It's awful. Don't use it. Please just don't just don't do it <laughs> So I ended up having to strip everything back with acetone free nail polish remover Then to speed up the repainting I tried applying the first couple of layers with a bit of a makeup sponge that I cut off I think it helped build the color a little bit faster. So it only took four or five layers this time then I painted the paw pads again. And then I had the genius idea to use my gloss varnish to seal it in, as I could just spray with some MSC on it afterwards to make it matte again. Flawless idea, right? Yeah, though the paw pads were dry to the touch, they must not have been fully dry because the sealant ate right through the paint. <laughs> So I painted them a third time and sealed them in with matte Mod Podge because I was just done. And at this point, that's, that's what we were doing. I was so, so done. So let's chill out a bit and work on the face up. All I had in mind going in was that I wanted to give her big, round, brown eyes and minimal makeup aside from her blushy cheeks. Hello, Dee Dee. Did you make my camera shake? Did you do it? Dee Dee, say hello. Oh, she done. Fine.
I also tried something new this time, using pieces of glitter for her eye shines. I think they turned out great, actually, and I'll probably end up doing this for future dolls as well. I added gloss to her eyes and lips, and a teeny bit on her nose. Once dry, I could remove the wrapping from her hair and attach her ears using super glue. To reattach her head, I heated it up with a hair dryer this time, mainly because I thought the ears would be unwieldy if I dunked it in water. I gave her a trim and secured her bangs to the side with some thread. I also added a couple of bows to hide some of the less sightly areas around her ears. I made her a dress using Delightful's simple dress pattern, which was honestly the easiest part of this custom. <laughs> so good on you, Catherine, for writing good patterns. I also made her some pink and white striped leggings. To act as her neck fluff, I made this little shawl. I adapted it from a human size pattern. So instead of a super chunky yarn, I used a DK weight and I used much smaller needles and knit less rows. I also made her signature red mail bag. The little tooth button is also made out of silk clay. I made teeny tiny letters all addressed to Mel's friends to put in the bag. Let's get her dressed! I decided not to make shoes for her after a failed attempt and like trying to think of many ways I could give her shoes. Because honestly, despite the issues I had, I really like her feet as is. She was certainly a big challenge, but in the end, she turned out to be super cute and I'm really proud of her. Be sure to check out all of the other adorable dolls in this collab, by the way, on Instagram under the hashtag SanrioCollab2020. Like this video if you've enjoyed my suffering, and subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified the next time I post a video. Until next time, bye!